Welcome to Crack It. Today we are going to discuss about configuring multiple databases in a single Spring Boot application. This question has become a recent trend in these days and this is a very commonly asked interview questions these days. So why do we need to configure multiple databases in an application? When do we need it and how can we do it? Let's see in this video. We have started this channel new so we request you to like share and subscribe our channel if you like the content firstly why do we need to configure multiple databases in a single application so the answer is multi-tenancy if we are going to support multiple tenants in a single application or multiple organizations using the same application then we need to configure multiple databases in our application one organization may support mysql and the other organization may support postgres but we have a single application that supports both the tenants so what do we need to do so we need to configure multiple databases in a single application in our Spring Boot application, if we have only one database, say MySQL, there is no need for us to configure data sources, entity managers or transaction managers explicitly by ourselves. Spring Framework by default manages all the creation of the data sources, entity managers and transaction managers by reading the properties in the application.yaml file or the application.properties file. When there is more than one database that we need to configure in our Spring application, will Spring automatically create the data sources, entity managers and transaction managers? The answer is no. Why? Because Spring will get confused for which database it has to create. So we need to explicitly create the data sources, entity managers and transaction managers for all the databases that we need to configure in our Spring Boot application. So let's see in code how we can create multiple database in our application. Let's try to understand what are the steps those are involved in creating multiple database configuration in a single Spring Boot application. First, what do we need to do? We need to provide our database configurations in our application.properties file. This is similar to configuring the uh, single database configuration in a Spring Boot. So if, suppose I have only one database, what will I do? I go to application.properties file, I, I will provide my what is the JDBC URL, username, password and the driver classes in my application properties so similarly i will i will create my data source jdbc url username and password for all the databases that i'm going to create in the spring boot application this is similar to the configuring uh, single database next i'll create my own entities yes this is similar i'll create my own repositories this is what is differing from single database configuration and multiple database configuration as we discussed in our previous slide what is it so we need to create our own data source bean we need to create our own entity manager bean and this will accept this data source bean as its parameter and the created entity manager bean will get injected into the transaction manager bean then we need to enable our jpa repositories and we need to enable our transaction management then what we will do we will create a controller to verify whether this is working fine or not this is what we are going to do in our coding and these are the steps involved so we will define our databases in application properties we will create the corresponding entities in repositories then we need to create data source bean entity manager bean and transaction manager bean for all the databases that we configured then we will enable jpa repositories and transaction managements for these uh, beans so this is my first step in which I have to define all the data source properties for all the databases that I'm going to use in my Spring Boot application. So as a part of this demo, we are going to create two databases. One is Postgres and MySQL. I have provided all the data source information for each of these databases. I have provided JDBC URL, username, password and driver class name for each of these databases. So after that what do we need to do we need to create our own data source properties entity manager and transaction manager for each of these databases so we have created let's see how we can create so first of all we need to create our data source so how are we creating we are using at configuration properties annotation here what will this at configuration properties annotation do this at configuration properties annotation will take this prefix as its 
input so it will go search in this application dot properties with that prefix so my prefix is mysql dot data source so it will go till this prefix and then configure each of these properties to its data source so what is that jdbc url username password and driver class name this is what is required to create our data source so this add configuration properties this annotation will take this prefix go to this application dot properties it will create all the relevant properties that we configured in our application dot properties and then it will create a data source object and it will return to us so i name that bean as mysql db so what do i need to do i have my data source now so i need to inject this data source to the entity manager for that we have to first define our own entities so where is my entity am i defined uh, am i already defined my entity yes i have defined already my entity this entity is for my mysql so this customer entity is for mysql and i have placed that in my entity mysql package so i'll come here so what did we do to create this entity manager bean for this entity manager bean to get created as we told earlier we need to inject this data source so i am calling this method and the data source that is created here will get injected to this entity manager factory builder so what else it wants to create this entity manager factory bean it needs the package in which the entities are present this is the entity manager so it should know where the actual entities are present so we need to provide that package in which the entities are present and that is entity mysql i have provided the package here and what is my persistent unit my persistent unit is customer so if we open here my persistent unit is customer we need to provide that persistent unit and we need to provide few hibernate jpa properties so what are my jpa properties whether i need to uh, display the sql query in my console or not whether do do i need to uh, create the table if it is not already present and i need to provide the dialect information so all these i will provide in the jpa properties and i will inject that to this entity manager factory builder properties and i will get a entity manager bean so i have my data source bean now with this data source bean get injected i have created my entity manager bean now so then i need to create my transaction manager bean by injecting this entity manager bean so if you see here my input parameter is the at qualifier of this mysql entity manager and i am creating a jpa transaction manager for it so i have all the three uh, things that i required for this mysql database so then what do i need to do i need to enable the transaction management and i need to enable the jpa repositories so if i didn't define this at enable jpa repositories this database configuration will not know where the repositories for the specific entities are present so we need to define it explicitly so what do we need to define what is my entity manager for this jpa repository as yes, this is my entity manager what is my transaction manager for this jpa repository as yes, this is my transaction manager and where is my repository present so if you see here i have created a jpa repository and that is present in the repository mysql package location so we need to provide that location as well here in this base packages so we have completed all the steps that is required for one of the mysql database configurations we need to do the same for the postgres so what and all we need to do we have to create our data source for this the prefix is postgres data source previously we know that the prefix is mysql so we are now we are creating it for postgres database so the prefix is postgres data source with the properties that we defined in the application properties all the data source information we have provided already so this at configuration properties annotation will read all those values from the application dot properties using this prefix value it will read all those value it will have it as a key value pair and with that it will create this data source information that we required once we created our data source information we need to inject it to our entity manager as yes, we are injecting it to our entity manager bean we have to provide in which package the entity is present we need to provide our persistent unit so let's go check what is our persistent unit our persistent unit is credit card so we need to define that 
and we need to define our jpa properties as well here if you see for mysql we have used mysql uh, dialect here we are using postgresql dialect and we have our entity manager being ready and with this entity manager we need to inject this to our jpa transaction manager to create the transaction manager so we have everything ready we have our data source we have our entity manager bin we have our transaction manager bin we need to define this at enable transaction management and at enable jpa repositories and we need to provide provide all the bin names here along with the package of the repository in which it is present in which package it is present it is present in the this repository for the postgres is present it is in repository postgres so if we see here we have created already a credit card repository for this postgres database so let's now go and check what we did in our controller so we have our entity ready we have our repository ready we have all our configs ready we have provided this at configuration in both of our mysql and database configuration then only uh, spring will pick it up uh, during the component scanning so we have provided it at configuration annotation here as well so i'll go open my controller now so in my controller like it's a very normal controller nothing fancy here so if you see here we have a get and post mapping for uh, uh, mysql database entity that is customer and we have get and post for the postgres entity which is the credit card so we have uh, uh, we have auto wired that customer repository and credit card repository and uh, since we uh, it's not good to uh, send the entity information we have just created a dtvo object for the customer and the credit card so if we go uh, we are just uh, in the post we are getting the customer dtvo object and we are saving it and we instead of returning the entity we are returning the customer dtvo object so for uh, returning the customer dtvo for the mapping we are using the uh, model mapper model mapper is like very simple we just need to add a so i'll open my pom.xml and show so i have added a dependency for my model mapper what will this model mapper do this model mapper will uh, if i provide it here like if you see here i have provided that add configuration and i have created a bean for it then only i can uh, use it as at auto wired in my controller so i'll go open my controller if you see here i'm using at auto wired if i'm not defining my bean there then i need to give model mapper model mapper is equal to new model mapper of so just to avoid that i've uh, defined a deep bean for it and i'm auto wiring that uh, whenever i require it so this model mapper uh, okay i'll open my uh, dtvo as well so if you see here the name in the dtvo and the entity is same so the model mapper if the properties in both the classes are same the model mapper by default will map this property this property of the customer entity to the customer id property of the customer dtvo so to just to make my mapping easy i am using this uh, model mapper configuration now i'll go to my controller again so where is my controller yeah so everything is ready for me let's now run and see whether my program is running what and all we did we have created my application dot properties we have created the repositories for our entities and we have defined everything in our database configurations we have enabled our jpa repositories transaction management everything is ready let me start the application now so if you see here Uh, since i have given the uh, hibernate property as create it will drop the table if it already present if you see here it is creating a table customer where is it creating head sql dialect which is sql if you see here it is creating a credit card table where it is using in the postgres database so i have both the postgres database and the mysql database running in my local <coughs> sorry so it picks all those information and created the table in my database so this is my request for the mysql database that i have created if you see here i am entering all the information that is required for my uh, customer dtvo so that is one crack it and address and let me send that yeah we can see that the status is 200 which means that object is uh, already created in the 
database let me send one more id maybe two i'll create one more customer information and i'll use the get i'll go check whether that is present or not for one yes sorry nothing is required here like even then it will work so if you see here i'm able to uh, fetch this customer id one uh, customer information which means that this got already saved into the database let's now check for the uh, postgres so if you see here i'll create credit card information here with id one name crack at expiration month and expiration year yes i'm able to create so i'll create two yes let me try to get that information and see whether that is already present in the database or not yes it is already saved to the database that's why i'm getting able to fetch that information so with this we can see that uh, this is working perfectly fine we can see all those queries since we give show sql as true all the queries that we inserting uh, selecting all those information is we can see so with this we can confirm that uh, both our postgres and mysql databases are configured properly and it is able to insert that information in the databases thanks for watching crack it please support us with your likes shares and subscriptions stay tuned for updates